Hi, I'm Neil Lorenz, and welcome to the 22nd annual Kettle Carvers Artistry in Wood, Wood Carving and Comp Show and Competition. I'm amazed every year when I'm here to see the, the display of artistry and craftsmanship that these carvers have. And uh, this year is no exception to that. We've got about 50 carvers here this year, and um, I'll welcome you to come on in and, and see some of their work. I'm Phil Hunink. Uh, live in the town of Oostburg. I do, do a lot of wood carving, and we're here at the show here in Sheboygan Falls today. And uh, I'm uh, very happy and fortunate to have uh, done well. But uh, this is a um, it's a work. Uh, I would say an effort of love. I, I just love to get a piece of wood in my hands and. Uh, make a caricature of some sort or an animal whichever seems to be in my mind that day but uh, this last project that I did here is uh, the walnut birds uh, which did quite well today in the showing uh, we always have to show a piece that we've done in the past years and uh, and that was one of my projects, and there will be another one you'll see coming up soon with a little carpenter looking down the board. He also was a new project for this year. I've done uh, multiple jobs um, or pieces. I like Norman Rockwell. If I can get a hold of him, I will do the him. And uh, sometimes I see a magazine cover I like. I uh, can't refuse to put it in wood some way. Yeah, it, it just becomes an enjoyable, enjoyable hobby. How long have you been doing it? I've been carving since 1994, and uh, it's. I've gone through a few seminars, uh, found out what to, you know, tried to uh, learn as I was going from the instructors. There's wonderful instructors out there. Um, and I belong to the Kettle Carvers Club, and uh, we do uh, uh, meet every month in Plymouth at uh, Generation Center, and uh, we share thoughts and bounce ideas off of each other. It's a wonderful project, and it's always very enjoyable. <laughs> uh, but. If you have some time, come on down. Uh, we'll we'll show you how. It's always a pleasure to have another person carve. Yes, my name is Herman Sporletter, and I'm from Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And I do a lot of relief carving for the most part. The one that he has right now is irises with a leaf background and leaves around the outside. Uh, I primarily do farm scenes and some fishing scenes. 
I have a snake in the back with a cross on top, which is a sign of Jesus. And uh, on around the bottom, it says, Christ shall crush the head of the serpent. Uh, I have uh, vases that I turn on a lathe, and then I carve out the flowers, and I color them with chalk. And then they have an acrylic over the top of them. And I also like to play around with dragons. I have two dragons here right now. One is a green, fiery, and the other one is called the Beast. And he's kind of a fiery looking guy too. Uh, I also do flowers in the round. This is an hibiscus with some morning glories around the outside. And the vase is turned from uh, white birch out of my yard. Uh, I also have a an urn, they keep teasing me that I'm going to be buried in that urn. It's uh, turned out of basswood and wood burned and leaves on it. And it's just a, a beautiful piece. I also have a relief carving on the end with flowers, sunflowers. I call it summer flowers. Uh, very pretty. A lot of chalks and a lot of acrylic paint is used on that. And it has a walnut frame. Uh, and Santa Claus up on top and an eagle, sign of America and our strength. Uh, and I also have a nativity set in the center, which again talks about our Christianity. Uh, the one, one on the top on the side is with the hands is called Saving Shavings. That's turned out of butternut and uh, basswood and then the savings I stuck inside to indicate saving them. Just a little fun piece. And the uh, sunflowers are next and they're all natural with a wood burn background. Uh, kind of a simple, easier piece to do. Uh, and the one on the end is just a tree sweeping over the, the countryside with the leaves on it. Uh, so I enjoy carving a great deal and I advise anybody who has any interest to come on down, take a look at the stuff that's here and maybe get involved. It's a very enjoyable, relaxing thing to do. So thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, a dragon that I've uh, carved. It's, he's made out of uh, basswood, painted with acrylics and uh, <coughs> standing on a volcano <laughs> a little bit. I have probably about uh, four, maybe 500 hours worth of work in that particular piece. We have uh, Samuel Clements is the bust and he's done out of butternut. And we have a little elephant this, this is called a caricature, in other words, a crazy thing. And uh, some wood burning on there. I, I use all acrylic paints. I have my bull rider. The name of this particular carving is 7.7 .7 seconds. As everybody knows, uh, eight seconds is the time you have to stay on and he might make it or he might not we haven't figured that one out yet this is uh, Albert Einstein and I started carving that wood it's it's basswood it was a, a log and I started carving it while it was still kind of wet and I had it mostly carved and all of a sudden he started cracking and cracking so I, uh, I had it almost done so I finished him up and then uh, it was suggested to me that I should name him, so we named him, What Was He Thinking? Brain is too big for his head. This is a black bear. He's scratching his back on that log. Name of this piece is Ecstasy. Uh, I do a lot of uh, uh, deeper uh, hair lines I like the texture. I'm, I'm all into texture. I try to get texture on almost all of my carvings. This is Mr. Einstein also, only this is a glued up piece so he doesn't split. 
and uh, I'm not sure which one I like best. This this one I've had a lot of trouble with uh, getting the, the uh, finish the way I want it. Uh, and that's about all I have. Heart. It's a pennant, and then it becomes a heart. Our pictures are in there. Then our daughter's pictures are in there. Now you watch the pivot points. See where that pivots? That disappears. And that's called a Lucianist heart. It took me a year to build it. And uh, after that, I made a penny that uh, I made. Should I show you the penny? is cut out with a saw blade that is five thousandths thick, about three times as thick as your hair. I have to hold it with two fingers in order to cut it out. It's a 1927 uh, penny. It's my wife's birthday. I cut this out of aluminum square with an owl. The eyes are ten thousandths in diameter. And the saw blade is 5,000 thick again. Then I have a bottle. With the insides all put together in the bottle. And there's a yoke up on top so it doesn't come out. mushrooms that we see here, I carved the tops out of out of cedar fence poles. I should actually say I turned them out of that. I carved the mushroom houses and the little fairy that's on there too. I used rice paper to make her wings. And the ground and the texture that's on the bottom of the, of the base is, is coffee grounds and, and red tea leaves that we use to do the texture with that. So, And then next to that is, is a turtle scene and it's a little box turtle and he's having lunch and it's an early morning forest scene along with the you see the water and the leaves that are down in the water and where he's taking a bite out of a mushroom along with that you also probably see an angle worm that's on top of uh, next to him in in that water scene so most and another carving that i have is a little sawwet owl it's all here she's carved out of basswood and painted with acrylic paints with that and I've got her mounted on a piece of uh, driftwood bark that I found that I have there. Uh, I do also do some character carving. A uh, little gentleman that we see here, I guess I call him Tom Selleck because I watch Blue Bloods occasionally on TV and he kind of looks like Tom Selleck. So. Uh, we winter in Florida so while I was down there I did carve a bunch of these items that you see on the table. Along with that also, there are uh, cottonwood bark carvings that I have here. All different types of, of some are, are lighthouses, some are little gnome houses, and we have a little bit of everything covered in here. And this here is a little, uh, a little wood duck hen that's in their nest, sitting in that house in wood, in, in uh, cottonwood bark, which was carved by my. Uh, brother-in-law Dan Casey so we're really enjoying the show here we're having a great time and meeting with a lot of the folks here so it's been a real pleasure to come here to Sheboygan Falls. This is a uh, Hoodie McAnzer Drake then we've got a northern shoveler hen this is a shorebird Um, then we got this bird, the chickadee, then we got a calves back drake, Baltimore Oriole, a 
Donnie Woodpecker. And a canvas back hen. He's all been carved by myself and Terry Dones. We use the, we uh, do power carving and we use acrylic for painting. I do instruct, I got three people coming over to my place where I do uh, instructions of carving and things like this. And we're from the uh, Sussex area. What's your name? My name is Ron Ingen. And uh, the gentleman that sits at the other table is Terry Dones, and he's from Delafield. And uh, we really enjoy this this uh, show, a really great show here they've got. And uh, we'll be back here next year too. Hi, my name is Peggy Nelson. Uh, I'm here at the show in Sheboygan Falls, and this is my second year here. Kind of carving you do? I do wood burdening or pyrography it's called and I've been doing it for about a little over two years. How did you ever become a wood burdener? Um, I got involved in it. Uh, my dad was a carver for 15 some years and he did wood burning and he passed away two and a half years ago. And uh, my mom was going through his room, cleaning out stuff, and I told her to give me the wood burner. I was gonna take a, a swing at it. And that was two years ago, January, and I've been doing it since. Thank you. Thank you. 154 boards that make up the windows, the handrails, the buildings in this piece of cottonwood bark. There's 34 trees, 11 stairways, 111 steps. There's two swimming pools in here. Could I turn it? There's two swimming pools in here. 14 balconies. Mm. Two church bells. How long did it take you to make this? This was 700 plus hours. And I use, I make um, most of my tools I had to make out of springs, fishing hooks, needles to carve this piece. I carved all sides of it, including the bottom. It is whimsical. Meaning, you have stuff in there that's there, but it doesn't make any sense being there. It's crooked. That's part of being whimsical. And where are you from, sir? Where are you from? Uh, Jamesville, uh, Bloit, uh, Clinton, Wisconsin in the Jamesville Beloit uh, Carving Club with the Rock River Carving Group down there. That's a barn owl catching a rat. Um, I did the barn owl because I like the coloration. I like the feet on it. Uh, I like the wing spread. And I like to do them in action shots. So. We're catching him going to dinner here, and it's set on a piece of barn wood um, with some straw on it, and then it has a, a wooden base, and it's suspended by an iron rod so that it allows me to put it in that particular position. I don't have to worry about it uh, getting lost, getting bent, breaking, things like that. That, that uh, specimen there is a roadrunner and a Gila monster. When I was working in Arizona, I would see quite a few of the roadrunners and an occasionally a Gila monster. And I like the uh, feathers on the roadrunner. I like the coloration on the Gila monster. And to get them in confrontation, I thought I would put some uh, hatching eggs in there. 
and uh, it gives the uh, a little life to the scene and I put it on a base that's made to look like sand with a cactus in the back because uh, they are desert animals. And the uh, cactus, uh, I like the flowers especially, so uh, I spent some time uh, putting those on there. I enjoy doing that. And then that's a decoy. It's a uh, pintail duck. Um, I like the way the uh, feathers uh, go on that particular bird so that's why I picked that. And then there's some songbirds here and um, just ones that I liked. Put them in different positions, um, mounted them and uh, um, basically a lot of people do songbirds. Um, the big red tail hawk on the end and the rattlesnake um, was a uh, video that I came across on the internet and I liked both the bird and I liked the uh, interaction there, so I uh, made that into a diorama, um, gave it a scene to go on to, and that's probably the piece that people comment on the most. And uh, carving is just kind of fun to do. It gives you a lot of uh, um, peace and quiet. Um, you get to make things that you like. You get to be in control of the situation, and you can do about whatever you want. Hello, this is an example of intaglio relief carving. It's a style that is uh, found on uh, pyramids. It's a type that I've found that I enjoy and I teach this. Uh, I find a pattern, I put it on the board, stop cut, and use the board to do my framing for me. It's uh, carved into the wood and uh, I use acrylic paints uh, with um, Minwax stain which uh, gives me a a stain where I can put multi colors on and mix them together for stain and and shadows and uh, I've been doing this for about four years now with this style and been having a lot of fun with it so I'm from Wisconsin Rapids and uh, been going all around teaching and going to other shows and just enjoying myself. <laughs> so. Thank you. You're welcome. This year's featured carver is Willard Van Sluis from Plymouth. Willard, you've been carving for how long? About 13 years. Uh, we'd like to have you talk about uh, some of your your carvings that you have here. Let's start with this this bluegill right here. Well, this was a 
uh, bluegill that was carved in a class that I took up in Chilton through the Fox Valley Technical School. Uh, Bill Wright was the instructor and uh, he taught us this process of carving the fish and also the process of painting to, to get the, the coloring and the, the effect of the, the live fish look. Is that a piece of driftwood, or what is the, the base that you're using? That's a burl from a tree that was finished off and cleaned up and polished. And I thought it looked like a good uh, item to use for the display of the fish. So, and then I carved the lily pads to insert into it. Adds a lot of depth by doing that. Well, thank you. I see you're, you're doing some bark carvings, and you've got a duck that's partially uh, started. Yeah, those are projects that are in the in the works to try to get completed in the future. So, what uh, what type of duck is that? It looks like he's sleeping. It's a mallard, a drake mallard, and uh, it's something that I, I have never done before. But I want to create the, the feathers and the, and the wood burn the feathers to, to make it look like a real duck and do the painting later on. Okay. I see in the background here that you've done a fair amount of relief carving. Um, looks like you must enjoy that. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about getting the proper depth? Well, it's all in the illusion of making it look deep by creating shadowing and uh, putting items in front of one another. And. Uh, taking into the consideration the, the horizon in some of the landscaping that will go along with it. And the others is uh, just uh, coloring and, and uh, layering of the, of the details of the parts. Uh, some of the carvings that I've done were classes that I've taken from other instructors. This one here is, is a new carving, isn't it? Yeah, this is an Emmett Kelly carving that I've class that I've taken through the Fox Valley Tech School in Chilton. Uh, there again, it's uh, shallow or a, a relief carving and it get the illusion of, of depth by creating angles and shadows and, and the color of the, of the painting in that. And the painting is 